Hey there, it's McCare. Today's video is going to be for my permies and my spoonies. And if you are both of those, then it's especially for you. And if you are neither of those, you're welcome to hang around. So a few months ago, January-ish, I made a video about permaculture zones and how we use those and how we decide what goes where. So the really simple version, and I will put a link for this video at the end so that you can catch up on it if you need to, but this should be standalone. The super basics are wherever the people are is where Ariel wants to be, but it's also <laughs> zone zero. So the house, the office, if it's a company garden, the school, if it's a school garden, the entrance, if it's a community garden, that's your zone zero. And then your zone one is the stuff that you spend a lot of time in because you want to, or that you visit frequently because it needs you, or that you visit frequently because you need it. Things that need a lot of watering, things that need a bunch of like regular pruning or frequent deadheading, chickens who need feeding, salad things that you would bring in daily, these sorts of things are going to be your zone one and then stuff that needs your attention less or that you need less is going to be pushed out to your zone two, three, four, five. Super quick, easy explanation of it. Let's look at how mine is set up and how it applies to permaculture and to being a spoonie. Permaculture lends itself really well to spoon theory because when we design for permaculture, we are making an intentional effort up front to set up our home, our garden, our community in a way that makes it easier for people to interact and easier to do the work that needs to be done. As a permaculturist, this is part of front-loading our work, of, of getting prepared for the future. For a spoonie, this is about putting things where we'll be able to get them done. So I think I've showed you this before, but our zone one starts right outside the back door. That is the kitchen. And so we come straight out into our herb, pepper, and greens bed. We have lettuce over here. We have garlic chives. We have green onions. We have chives. Our sage and oregano are over here. Some of our peppers that are just barely getting started are over here. Our strawberries are over here. And our ridiculous volunteer passion vine that I have to stand up a couple of times a day because I need to find a new trellis for it is over here. Now, that plant is fortunate that it volunteered in zone one because otherwise I wouldn't be here to stand it up three times a day. Mm -mm. It would just have to sprawl. But as it is, it chose a good spot and it gets to be fixed a few times a day. But this is all stuff that I grab to bring inside for a meal. Ooh, I'm making potatoes. I want to put some sage on them. I'm going to come out here and grab some. Oh, I'm going to make a salad. Let me go grab some lettuce and some chives. You see, it's the quick grab stuff. It's the easy stuff. It's this little rosemary that I'm trying to put lots of nitrogen fixers around to replace the great big rosemary that used to live here. So this is right out the back door. If I'm not feeling great, it's still really simple to come grab these few little things. And, you know, these aren't like stuff I'm going to do a big harvest of, you know. Um, there is one tomato plant up here, but all the rest of them are down at the bottom. And this is just a determinant that um, I wanted to trellis differently is the only reason it got placed up here instead of down at the bottom with the other tomatoes. So let's go take a look at what is beyond the back door. So from the back door after the kitchen gardens, the next thing I come to is the chicken yard. But on the way there, I have my potted garden that needs frequent watering and my seedling table that needs frequent watering. Both of these things are intentionally placed on the way to the chicken yard because I know that I will stop here on the way to feed the chickens. And I know that my friends will stop here on their way to tend the chickens. 
So it's really good place to have things that need frequent, frequent, frequent water to be in the path that you're going to pass so that they're present in mind and so that they're easy to take care of because the hose mounts from right over there. From there, we go into the chicken yard. And this makes a simple place for the chicken yard. It's just a few steps. I am already at the chicken's door. If you happen to have chickens and you, you don't have so many that you want them away from the house or you don't have a rooster where you want them away from your bedroom, on that note, I, oh, about 10 years ago, I had a flock of six and I ended up with three roos and they were outside my bedroom window. Aside from them telling on me when I came home from getting tattooed at three o'clock in the morning, there was no problems with them being outside the window. It's just, you get used to it, you go on sleeping, no big deal. But, point being, they're here where they're easy to care for. And their egg door is not far from the back door, so it's easy to bring eggs in. And the chickens just run around minding their business, doing their thing. As a matter of fact, where are they? Hey ladies. Yeah, what's we doing babies? You being good chickens? And the chickens do have their own little gardens over here. When my friend does the chicken dishes, she waters them for me, so that makes it super simple. And they can feed themselves, but also they enjoy being hand fed. Yeah, is it good? You like those pea shoots? You got one on you. <laughs> so in the cooler months, this is the last stop in my zone one, the compost bin. It wouldn't even need to be zone one. It really can be zone two. I where I try to turn my compost three times a week. I have not been really good about that lately. I've been doing good to get two. So this could be a zone two, but for us it works really well because we can clean out the chicken mess and bring it to the compost. It's right in the middle of the gardens. I can bring everything up here and it makes it easier when I am loading out compost. It's at the top of the hill from some of the other gardens. It makes it easy to take a full wheelbarrow wheelbarrow why is that word hard downhill <laughs> but since we are now in the warmer months my zone one extends along the edge along the perimeter to right about there so what i've added is our three sisters area so we have corn going in every two weeks with some sort of a melon or a vining plant going in every two weeks and beans going in every two weeks. And we're doing that in little blocks. We have our tomatillos. They're waiting for a friend to grow next to them over there. All of the potted mints and the pot experiments are down here. We have some pollinators that stay up here just for convenience. And then we come down to the medicinal garden. Now this doesn't need to be zone one, but it's pretty and I like to visit it. And it drops me off into my tomatoes. So we all know I'm behind on my tomatoes and my peppers and my basils and all those things because of the soil thing. You know. During the warm months, I consider my tomato gardens to be zone one. They don't really have to be. Because of the way that I mulch really deeply, I don't have to water them daily, even when it's 100 degrees every day. I water two or three times a week. If it's really bad, if we're over 100 for a while, I might water four times a week. I might go to every other day. That's really about it. So these don't have to be my zone one, but they're getting flowers. And once they start to put on fruit, I'm going to visit them every day, whether they need me or not. <laughs> Think about that when you're arranging your zones. If there's something that maybe doesn't need you, but you want to go check on it and you want to go spend time with it, Put it where it's going to be an easy walk. Put it along, you know, your main path or near your exit. So keeping my gardens and my chickens organized this way with all this stuff accessible and easy to visit makes it so that when I do come out here, I'm not bumping back and forth all over the yard. I can follow one path from the back door all the way down here without having to knock around, step over stuff, go all different directions. And I make sure that there's always some bonus beauty to enjoy. 
Remember I told you if you planted carrot tops, they would grow you carrot flowers? It's almost ready to bloom. Whether you're a permi, or a spoonie, or both, or a neither, think about these things. Think about what you need to get to the most and put it where it's easy. Put what you need to use the most where it's easy. Put the stuff that you enjoy the most where it's easy and save yourself a whole lot of time and energy and wasted effort. Alrighty, that permaculture zones video is going to be up here for you and I will see you later. Later y'all.